uh, the Six Nations is nearly upon us. The media day was yesterday. We've uh, seen some comments from Johnny Sexton and also from um, Andy Farrell too, talking about what his hope for the, the tournament is just to still be in it with a chance of winning it at the end because England at home is our last game. Uh, so plenty of excitement around that and uh, we've been doing our depth charts. The team has looked relatively predictable up to this point. Neve Briggs joins us this morning to do the back three. Neve, good morning to you. How are you? Morning, how are you? The Ireland team has unfortunately picked itself a lot in, in recent years. Does the back three, when you were thinking about it, was it relatively straightforward? Yeah, it was. I think um, probably more concerning was when you're trying to go down to the one to four. So as you were getting towards the end, um, it wasn't as clear cut, but... Yeah, definitely for starters and, and very near backups, um, it was pretty much uh, an easy enough task, I thought. OK, well, look, we'll get into the, the depth of the depth chart in a moment, but who who are starting on the two wings and who's your starting fullback? Um, my starting fullback would be Hugo Keenan. Um, I think he's had an unbelievable start for Lens this year. And, um, yeah, I think he's probably... Um, the best fit for, for that position. And I know they've tried Jacob Stockdale and Jordan Armour there. Um, I just, I'm not sure about that. And on my wings, I would probably go Keith Earls and Jordan Larmer. Now, I know in my depth chart in the right wing, I had Andrew Conway second, but I think it's a lot depended on the opposition. If it's ball in hand and on the ground and the game is going to be tight or on the ground, as I say, then you're looking at Jordan Larmer. But if it's going to be something in the air, and a more defensive type of game, probably looking at Andrew Conway, but I go Jordan Larmer on the right wing. OK, well, look, we'll get into uh, the, the wing selections. Let's go um, in-depth on the full-back. So Hugo Keenan is number one at this stage. Um, it's been great that Hugo Keenan has been able to kind of not come from nowhere, but to nail that place down so quickly. He's number one. Shane Daly at Munster is number two. Joey Carberry is number three in your depth chart, and Michael Lowry from Ulster is four. It's interesting that you don't have Stockdale and uh, you don't have Jordan Larmer in your fullback depth chart. You're not convinced by them. No, I'm not. I think a big um, thing about being a fullback is it's, it's almost like a second ten in terms of your ability to be able to uh, predict what's going to happen a phase or two down the line. I think Rob Kearney was unbelievable at that. So that your position sense, you're almost not chasing the game. You're there where you need to be. And for me, I just not sure Jordan Larmer or Jacob Stockdale have that. I think. Are both incredibly accomplished wingers, but um, I think for a fullback, for that peace of mind, um, you've got to be in the right position at all the time, and your ability to work off the ball has to be one of the highest in the team. Um, and yeah, I think Hugo Keenan does that. I think he does it unbelievably well. Um, I think Shane Daly. I'd love to see him play more there. I think he has the he has the athletic ability to be very um, positive there, but I, I'm not sure that that will. You know, I would just love to see him there personally. Um, the whole Joy Carberry thing, when I was showing it to the girls last night, they were like, Joy Carberry, I think if he's not going to be 10, it's still going to be Johnny and he's back fit. You've got to have him on the pitch and his ability to play another playmaker um, will offer another dynamic to that, to that Irish attack, which hasn't been free-flowing and as fluid as we want, I think. I think Michael Lowry's been playing brilliant for Ulster. I think he's a 10 slash 15, so he's able to be, um, you know, in terms of his ability off the ball, he's able to see where the ball is going to be. He's able to predict a, a phase or two ahead. And um, his footwork is unbelievable and he's great in the air. So, yeah, no, it's it's not a slight on Jacob Stockler, Stockdale or um, Jordan Larmer. I just think that the four guys are probably better suited to a fullback role. That. Go on, Owen. Well, it, it's interesting that you mentioned the specific attributes that are required to make a, a good 15 there. Can, can you learn that, Neve? Is, is this more natural, I guess, awareness that maybe only comes as a result of getting a lot of minutes of 10 that allows that transition to happen? Like, what, what, what is that down to actually knowing a phase or two ahead of the game what's actually going to happen? Um, yeah, I, I, you definitely can learn it. I think you can learn any skill or a, any facet of the game. I just think at international level, it's not the place to learn it. And um, I think Ulster tried Stockdale at fullback for a couple of games um, and they went back to Michael Lowry. And um, similar with, with Jordan Larmer, I think. Um, and and for, for example, Robbie Henshaw, you know, the, when Joe Schmidt area, you know, they tried him back there. You just got... It's it's a difficult skill to learn, but it's about being 
it's you're almost trying to it's like a game of chess you're almost trying to ga gauge or you know show the opposition 10 or or fullback space and then take it away at the last second and um so yeah i think I think we probably never really appreciated Rob Kearney for the work that he did off the ball as much as we do now, to be honest. It's funny how Rob Kearney's reputation is getting even better as the, the time goes on. Like, if you look at how Munster really targeted Larmer, in, even in the first 15, 20 minutes of the game at the weekend, they were like, look, we know coming back from injury under the high ball, you're uncomfortable. So the first, I think it was three knock-ons in the first 10 minutes. You can't do that at international level if you're going to be a fullback. You need to be 100%. And that's why Keenan very quickly went from not in the squad to first choice and kind of undroppable at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I think his time at the sevens as well was, you know, stand to, stood to him usually. I think your your ability to try and mark the space in sevens, your footwork has to be good and, and your ability to be able to move the ball. I think um, you're 100% right about, about Larmer. Um, and it's not just the last game, you know. I think there's been question marks about his ability to... Um, to contest high balls in the air under pressure. Um, and, you know, any good team and, and at an international level, every team is good, um, will sniff out a weakness like, like Munster did last weekend and they'll exploit it. And, you know, unfortunately, at this level, you, you just, you can't really have any big weaknesses. You can have facets of the game that you need to improve, I'm sure. But you can't have big weaknesses because teams will just... Will will you know they're too clever. The likes of England. Imagine Ford, um, Farrell, Ben Youngs, and um, they'll just pick holes in that all day, and, and you just you can't have that. It, the the Joey Carby fullback idea, like, it looks like Sexton is going to stick around at least. You know, he's talking about a new contract that would take him to next year, and then we're a year out from the World Cup, and nobody at Leinster has come close to being first choice while Sexton is still there, and. As a result, the competition at Ireland hasn't quite been there yet. Maybe if Joey Carberry comes and plays a whole season for Munster at 10 and is absolutely outstanding, then fair enough. But you get the sense maybe Munster might look at him in a, a different position as well. They might they might play him... You know, It's hard to know because they, they obviously have some very good quality young players coming up. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with all those contracts over the next while. But is there a possibility that whatever happens, we probably need... Sexton and Carberry in the team, however it happens. Yeah, absolutely. Look, I don't think um, I don't think Johnny's going anywhere anytime soon. As much as people like to to try and and they seem to be pushing him out the door. Um, I think he's still the probably the general of that backline. I think he makes things tick. And um, but for sure, you know, it'll be a big ask for Joey Carberry to come back in and, and play week in, week out after such a long layoff. So you've got to try and ease them into the game. And if that's in minutes at 10 and minutes at full back, um, you know, I think both Munster and Ireland will benefit few, hugely from, from it. Look, we we know how good he is in terms of ball in hand and we know how much he can just go from naught to 60 and his ability to step defenders. Um, so maybe, look, Fullback might be an, op an opportunity to get him as many minutes as he he'll need once he comes back into it. But I think we just have to urge patience at the moment for him. All right, left wing we have Keith Earls, Jacob Stockdale, James Lowe, and you put Hugh O'Keen in there. I presume if somebody else is playing in fullback, Keith Earls also just undroppable at the moment and and kind of over the last decade or so, um, there's been no sign of any drop off in terms of his uh, defensive game or his attacking game. Yeah, absolutely. I think for me, he has to start on the left wing. I think that's his best position. I think um, it frustrates me a little bit how uh, Ireland don't seem to use him or, or any of the wingers too much. And I think that's probably a, down to a, a, maybe a, a lack of an attacking um, fluidity in their game plan, maybe. But he, yeah, he's absolutely undroppable. I think um, he's experienced in terms of his ability to control that back three, his help in, in, in you know, that 13 channel, like anybody will tell you that's played rugby at a high level, 13 is one of the most difficult positions to play because the space that you're trying to defend and attack in is so vast. When you have a winger that's so good and so confident beside you, it almost gives you that little bit of relief to be able to go and make and force issues and, and try and make things happen. So, yeah, look, he's unbelievable. His footwork and he hasn't lost any speed. And I think that's just, you know, 
Ireland need to try and incorporate him and the winger, you know, the other side um, as much as possible, I think. Yeah, so Keith Harris is uh, 33 at this stage. You kind of feel like he, he probably will, as fitness assuming, still be there or thereabouts when it comes to the next World Cup squad. Uh, where do you stand on the whole, uh, we're 28 games out from the World Cup, uh, you're either going to be part of the World Cup squad or you're not. Is it more important to win now and breed a winning culture or is it more important to play the long game? Um, I think for Andy Farrell and you know that coach and setup that's come in, it's been such a difficult first year in terms of so stop start and the pandemic and everything that's happened after it. And then, you know, they're trying to view watch players and um they they've just had games postponed and club games not not taking place. So it's hard to get any kind of fluidity. So I think for the next eight or ten weeks They've got to try and find um, a game plan in a niche that suits them and then really go for it and then use this block to win, to breed confidence, breed winning culture and and then maybe look forward after that. Okay, so now it's win, 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 no matter what happens. So that whatever you're doing after that, it's done with the background of a bit of comfort and a bit of sense of, yeah, we do know what we're doing. Don't worry, we've got this. Yeah, kind of. I think you want to see things progress. I think you want to see game plans progress in terms of, you know, um, I thought they defended quite well at times over the Autumn Nations Cup, but you still think that they're missing a small link in that attack. And whether it's a player like a Ty Byrne or um, you know an Ian Henderson or somebody like that that can come in that can be that playmaker to link both, um, you just felt like a small bit. Um, it's a little bit static and a little bit stop start, and, I, and I'm not sure that Ireland play their rest rugby that way. Yeah, we certainly we haven't got results playing that way anyway. Uh, so if Keith Earls is starting on the left wing for you, who starts on the right wing and, and what's on the other side? Yeah, I think, as I said earlier on, it's probably a lot to do with the opposition. For me, if you know, you're know you looking to play ball on the ground and you're looking to exploit space as quickly as possible, then it's got to be Jordan Larmer, I think. You know, he's electric over on the ground and his ability to set people is like outrageous. And I'm... Um, you know, I'd love just to sit back and watch a highlight reel of him because I think he's 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 so far ahead in terms of ability to make things happen in small space, almost like a Cheslin Colby type of a player. You know, if he can get him ball in space or get him ball with a soft shoulder, he can make things happen. There is a worry, obviously, defensively and and in the air. And if you're looking for safe, then you probably go with Andrew Conway. I think while he's not as explosive on the ground as Jordan Larmer, I think his ability to be safe in the air. He's 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 an unbelievable high ball catcher. His defensive work is excellent. Um, so yeah, I think it could 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 be down to a lot of um, who you're playing against. Who are those uh, teams, Neve? Like uh, for example, for, for Wales, if you use that as the example, who are you going for for that game? I would go Conway. I think I think Conway it, Wales kick a lot. I think they'll exploit a lot. I think um, it's the likes of maybe you know France don't kick a huge amount in terms of from their 10 um our fullback I think Scotland Italy they're the type of games that Jordan Lamar could could potentially feature really well I think that Conway if, if you're going to if the, if you're going to be playing a game a tactical game a game against the likes of an England or a Wales who are just going to kick balls all day their percentage of kicking is really really high then you know, you've got to you've got to make sure that you're safe at the back, and then you can try and create options after it or or moments in the game. And um, so, yeah, maybe I'll probably go with Andrew Conway for that game. It, it feels like Jacob Stockdale is the odd man out here. Then, is there a scenario that you see? Is there an opposition that you see in the Six Nations where you think to yourself, yes, he could start in the back three? Yeah, absolutely. Look, I think he's he's um, like there's no doubt, and he's he's had an unbelievable run in terms of his ability to score tries. We don't have many players like that, so it's not as if I'm just casting him to the side. I think um, I think you've got to look at a balance of a, of a back line in terms of back three. They've got to be able to work together. They have to be able to cover ground together, and that's going to be really important. Um, and, yeah, absolutely, he could, he could, he's as physical as they come, I think, and his ability to create tries out of nothing a couple of years ago was... Um, something that you know we as rugby supporters were absolutely clamouring for, and I think he's had a couple of blips in between that. That maybe we're all now starting to think, oh, like a bit like the Jordan Larmer thing with a high ball. You know, he's had a few games where he's been put under pressure. Does that start to change your thinking? 
going forward, Jacob Stockdale is probably as good as any winger that we have. It's just the other facets of his game. Yeah, so what, what do you do in that instance? Like, how, how do you, as a, as a coach and as a management team, again, they're thinking short-term victory, but obviously we want to build a team for the World Cup. You expect if, if Ireland are going to compete to reach a semi-final or win a World Cup, we're going to need, like, Stockdale fully formed, absolutely uh, ready to go 100%, and uh, he's just not there at the moment. So do you take him out of the firing line? I mean, obviously he's injured and he's going to come back in the middle of this tournament, so not with, not with caveat, caveating all that. Like, is it just a... Or do you give everybody a bit of game time here and just keep them all trying to slit each other's throats as you go along? No, absolutely. I'd have him back in and amongst it, and then it's how he... You know, it's how quickly he gets up to the pitch of things. You know, they're obviously going to be over these few weeks um, progressing what they've done over the Autumn Nations Cup and, and those last two Six Nations games. So he's going to have to try and get to the pitch of that. And if he gets to that quickly, then absolutely I'll have him in and, and have them all vying for each other's blood. I think there's, you know, the big thing that you said to me at the start of this was that the team basically picks itself. And mm, at international level, that should never really be the way. I think it has to be a case of um, players, you know, clamouring to try and get starting jerseys and then big debates about who starts. And then when teams are named, you know, almost people going, how is this person not starting? How is that person not starting? And and at the moment, you know, we haven't really had that across the board, but I think that the potential in all these players that we've named are huge and they all have potential to be world class. So I, I would absolutely keep them all in, in, in tick, 100%. Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult job to do for the the coaching ticket. But if you just if if they decide their first team is the game uh, is picked for the team against Wales, is picked for the game against Wales, and then they don't change it, that'd be really unbelievably frustrating for anybody who's not in it. And you would feel like you're butting your head against a brick wall. Whereas actually, I mean, I, I know you know a lot of coaches want everything sure and everything certain and things locked down because it, it gives you a guarantee of of where you're going. But actually. We, we have proper depth here, you know, any combination of any of those players. If Conway played at fullback and Keenan played on the wing one of these games, that'd be an interesting little experiment too, because I really think Conway's an excellent fullback and hasn't really been given his head there. Yeah, absolutely. For a long time, I thought he was Munster's best fullback and he was playing on the wing. Um, and then, you know, the more that they're not out of that position, the more you kind of, it kind of slides to the back of your mind. So I 100% agree with you. But yeah, absolutely. I think the majority of these players can mix and match. I think... Um, it's not a case of that they're all nailed down at all. Probably bar Keith Earls, I think. And that's because he is the glue that sticks that back three together. But um, other than that, there's definitely huge scope for players to come in and out, all dependent on opposition, and then play to their strengths and weaknesses. Like, I, I don't know if you watched the South African documentary after, after they won the World Cup, but, you know, they had this thing going that their players knew that they might only get a small amount of game time, and if that, and if they if they got that, that was fine. They'd make their time worth it, and and Ireland have to have that kind of similar uh, trait or or a culture that you know, I'm in for today. I might not necessarily be in for next week, but if that's the case, I'm going to make it you know the best eighty minutes that I can, so that I'm still fresh in everybody's minds, irrelevant to whether I start next week. Yeah, look, I think that's a really interesting conversation to have because um, Ron O'Gara really very kind of left field saying that actually the best thing for the last few years of Johnny Sexton's career might be if Joey Carby emerges as our best 10 because then Sexton is our number two out half and he can come off the bench and finish games and geez what a brilliant scenario that would be and I'm thinking I mean but you wouldn't have liked that really because you know, he obviously wanted to start but times have moved on and changed and it'd be interesting to hear what Sexton has to say and we have him on the show tomorrow so I'm looking forward to asking him about it <laughs> uh, I have to work out exactly how I phrase it <laughs> uh, listen, O'Gara says this. I think it's you. What do you think? Um, but like, I think I, I listened to that interview. I thought it was a, a really smart piece of analysis from O'Gara. I think um, you were ten and a fifteen. If someone said to you, "Look, your career is going to be expanded and extended by a couple of years, but you'll be coming off the bench," would you've been? Uh, let me. How unhappy would you have been? Um. I think that if I had been younger and, um, you know, midway through my career, I, pr I probably wouldn't have been too happy. But as I, I got older and um, 
realised that you know there was probably as good better players than, than I was, and and also um, the ability to probably churn out eighty minutes. You know, I I hated 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 being taken off, but if I felt at that stage that I could have added maybe twenty twenty five minutes every game, and could be the person that could make a difference and close out games, well. 100% I would have taken it and um, and I would have grabbed it with both hands and that, that's that been purely honest from my perspective and don't get me wrong I, I you know there would have probably been days where I would have been like oh I played really well for that 20 minutes I hope I get a start next week knowing probably full well I wouldn't um, and that would have been frustrating but um, yeah if it was going to extend my international career I, I, I definitely would have yeah it will be interesting to see what happens. Um, that that depth uh, that we have of, of the number tens at the moment, particularly in Munster, you know, again, uh, O'Gara was was fishing in the Munster pool and, and trying to convince Crowley to come over to uh, to La Rochelle. It obviously didn't happen, but there is now a bit of a logjam. If and fingers crossed, Carby comes back fit, suddenly there's four out halves at Munster, all of whom we would like to see playing for a regular period of time at ten, just to see wh where are they at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's a couple of them of that four and they that are are, fit, are up in contract this summer, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. Like you know, Munster are in a really strange predicament. I think they've, I think I read yesterday that 24 players that are in the senior squad that are out of contract this summer, and and um, surely you know, given the financial predicament and and what's going on, they, they probably can't keep them and um, keep them all. So I'd imagine, um, as the next few months go and Joy's injury you know keeps going the way it seems to be going now in terms of he's back on the pitch and he's back getting training minutes um possibly one could lose out there and um but for sure i think um jack crowley ben healy you know they're they're so exciting and um as you know as a supporter you you want to see them get as much game time but you know it's it's really difficult to sit back and watch people come down on jj hanran because I thought, he, you know, I th he he's done incredibly well for the majority of all the games that he's played over the last season, and um, basically probably been the only ten that's there because Joey's been injured, and 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 Ben Healy was kind of on that cusp of you know jumping from academy to to development in, into that squad. So, um, yeah, it, it, look, it's it's why they get paid the big bucks, and I certainly wouldn't want to be choosing. Um, to keep tens and and what tens are going to be available to you because um, if Joey comes back fit, you know, he clearly has to start. That's what they've signed him for. That's what you know. That's what the whole game plan was put around. And and I'd be really keen to see how he slots into a Steve Larkham attack because yeah. I think it goes another level. Yeah, no, it's like unbelievably exciting, and you're trying not to get too ahead of yourself because we you know the injury profile and the history as well. Last question for you. We've been asking Alan Quinlan. You know, are you optimistic? Are you pessimistic? And last week he couldn't quite answer it for us. He was kind of still. We were just coming off the back of the fairly, you know, it was a really powerful game between Leinster and Munster. I think he was still a little bit um, down about the fact that Munster hadn't got it done. Wasn't quite ready to be excited about this. But we're we're all we're all stupid sports fans. We're like, you know, pre-tournament is the perfect time because, well, maybe if it all breaks our way and if England get a few injuries, who knows? We've got them at home. Uh, so, are you optimistic or pessimistic at the moment? Yeah, look, I'm hugely optimistic. Look, I can't wait for for the Wales game next week. I think um, it's it's it feels like it's been such a long year since this time last year. So, any kind of life sport and and rugby especially makes me incredibly excited about what's going to happen. I do think there were huge elements of that Munster Leinster game that will make me, you know, incredibly excited about what's to come. Um, and I think the way elements the way certain players in Connacht and international players in, in Ulster have been playing. Um, I think people are playing in form and they're, they've been working really hard in terms of their strength and their fitness and stuff. So um, if they can develop that game plan more, that especially in attack, I, I would be incredibly optimistic. But there's a, there's a question mark over the ability to attack space as opposed to bodies. Uh, one final thing, <clears throat> Neve, is just to wrap up our next generation picks. Who have you gone for here? We usually get uh, three here. So who are you looking at at the back three? Yeah, I went with uh, Aaron Sexton and Ethan McElroy from Ulster and Max O'Reilly from Leinster. I 
think um, Ethan McElroy has obviously broken into that Ulster squad already and he's incredibly exciting and, and Max O'Reilly to be fair has got game time with Leinster over the last couple of weeks but um, Aaron Sexton is, is, is definitely one to look out for I think um, an international sprinter who's given up his sprinting career to to play and um, to play rugby professionally. Um, yeah, he looks like a really good pick. Good stuff. Thanks a million, Neve. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thanks a million. Neve Brake giving us some thoughts there on the depth chart for the back three and also what we do with our glut of tens. If you want to get in touch with us this morning, you can uh, WhatsApp the show 087 9180 180. OTBAM live in association with Gillette. Good mornings. Start with Gillette giving you the confidence to tackle the day ahead. Um, what's your back three, Owen? Who are you picking? I am not... Like, before listening to Neve, I wasn't convinced that it is a done deal that Hugo Keenan is going to be the starting fullback for Ireland. I thought that Larmer or maybe even Conway had a really good shout at that position. After listening to her, it's clearly going to be Hugo Keenan, and I am officially swayed. Um, I think Keith Earls obviously has to start, and... Then I think it probably comes down to opposition again. I think Andrew Conway perhaps edges Jordan Larmer. But it's such a hard one to pick. Like, I mean, 12 months ago, it looked like Larmer and Conway were going to be the two undroppables in that back three. Keith Earls has come back to full fitness and has been brilliant. And then you've had uh, Keenan absolute, like, absolutely bolt from the blue, I guess, in the context of the last 12 months or so. So those two players are perhaps not two that you would have fully counted on going into this year's Six Nations. And as a result, one of Conway or Larmer has to lose out. And gun to my head, I'd pick Conway in an overall sense because he would start every game and would be versatile enough to do well against any opposition. News came through as well that Ian Madigan has uh, re-upped at Ulster. Um, I'd say Ulster was a potential landing spot for JJ Hanrahan if, um, you know, if you could partner him with Cooney. That would be a perfect scenario for him where he doesn't have to do the kicks, but actually his all-round game has been excellent.